Hello there, you're welcome to another tutorial on SC Toots. I'm Sir Classy, and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to spice up the vocal mix using our Waves SSLG channel strip. Hit the subscribe button and let's get started. So, before we get started, we have project files, loops, templates, kits and so much more that you can use to follow up on tutorials and speed up your learning. And they are available in our community section. You can join our community just by clicking the link in the description below. Yes, the very first link in the description below. You click and have one year access to our community for one low price. You get our vocal stems, beat stems, our vocal mixing chains, stems, loops, so much, so much more. So you can speed up the learning process while following up our tutorials right here on YouTube. All right, so now let's get started with today's tutorial. All right, so right here we have our beat and our vocal track. So this is just the um, lead vocal with the beat. So let me play it back for you to listen. All right, so we've done some tuning on the lead vocal. We've done some tuning and we've done a little bit of surgical EQ to take out low end rumble and some nasal frequencies. And you see why we did that with the um, parametric EQ in FL Studio and why we didn't use, or, 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 or rather, why we are not using the um, EQ in Waves SSL. So right now I'm going to load up my Waves SSL. All right, so before we start doing anything, I'm going to give you an overview of this, tell you what all these buttons do and what these sections mean. Trust me, it's not as complicated as it seems. It's really, really straightforward once you know what they do. So when you see here, right there, the interface, they are basically split into two main sections, the filters and the dynamics. In the filter section, we have the equalizers, or rather the equalizing section, which is also split into four bands. Now we have the high mid frequency, we have the, sorry, we have the high frequency right here. We have the high mid frequency, we have the low mid frequencies and the low frequencies. And they all have their range just by the side right here. You can see from 1.5 kilohertz to 16 kilohertz, that is for the high mid. And right here we have the Sorry, for the high frequency and now for the high mid frequency, we have from six, you can see right here, from 600 hertz all the way to seven kilohertz. And here we have for the low mid frequency from 200 hertz all the way to 2.5 kilohertz. And the low frequency here we have from 30 hertz all the way to 450 hertz. So that's it for the um, equalization section of this console and right here we have the dynamics here you can see we have the compressor we used to control the dynamics of the signal running through it and here we have the expand and gate and what the expand and gate does is that a gate is or rather an expand is the opposite of a compressor and a compressor controls the dynamic frequency when it exceeds a certain threshold but what a, a gate or an expand does is that any sound that is below the threshold any sound that is below the threshold it either it compresses it or it kills it completely it doesn't try to come it, do, it doesn't try to control the dynamic but rather any sound that just falls below it it kills it or compresses it drastically so that's what that's different between the expand or gate and a compressor a compressor keeps everything under a threshold but a gate kills everything under a threshold so and right here we have our analog switch which emulates the analog console because this was an actual analog console that was made into a virtual plugin so just by clicking this you can toggle it off to have that to have the analog warmth if you want that and here we have you can just easily increase the loudness level if you want and here is the main output you can increase this and here we have some small buttons here that can be useful here you can bypass your eq changes but bypassing the eq changes does not mean that it's going to just run through the, uh, or rather ignore the um, 
the character of this plugin it's still going to emulate the console but only that it's going to ignore your eq changes but it's still going to have that analog warmth that brightness that roundness that this console has naturally if you want to sidechain your eq to your um dynamics then you can just click this and it's going to let that happen and this bypass also if you want to bypass your dynamics it's going to let that happen and also here this is the channel out what it does is that if you want your dynamics to happen before equalization, you click this. But if you want it to happen after equalization, you click this. You know that common, um, uh, I don't know if I'll call it beef or a war between which comes first, the EQ or the compressor. So this is, what, this is how you can solve that in this, um, in this plugin by just clicking this. When you click this, is on the compressor or rather the dynamics will happen first before it goes into the EQ section. When this is off, it's going, the EQ is going to happen first before the dynamics start working. All right, so that's pretty much it. And now we're going to start working with this plugin. So we're going to be starting with the EQ. I remember we already had a surgical EQ here with FL Studio Parametric EQ. And this is because you see this precision, we can't get that with the Waves SSL. Um, um g channel so this is much more flexible to control and get those resonant frequency out so now what we're going to do is we're going to also make it you know when you do your surgical eq you know understand you can still make it even better with just adjusting some e uh, some frequencies here and there to make it even more interesting so and that's what we're going to do with this eq here just to add some polish add some shine and also control a little bit of the mid the mid-range frequency as well all right so when you load it up, make sure you come to full resets. That you come to load full reset so that it doesn't have any of its presets um, on the way. Although, of course, they have very good presets. You can come to load here and you see some vocal, like lead vocal presets, backing vocals, and some famous mixing engineers and their presets as well. We want to do this from scratch. And then we'll compare the before and after. So here, when we're listening, it's turned on. So we're listening. Yeah. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not so now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the low end of this. We're going to stick it all the way to, let's say, 100 hertz for a start. We can always adjust this. Dial it up to 100 hertz. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do if I take out the way here, it sounds. Yeah, do not disturb this is going to tell you where it should start acting from. That is this low, this um, bar, this dial right here. So you tell you that anything that is going to affect just the hundred heads of that frequency, or rather of the signal coming in. I meant to say. So here we can decide if we want it to be a bell. As what kind of um note we want? If we want a bell or a peak equalizer. Right now this is a peak equalizer and this is a bell equalizer. So let's just leave it here. Nothing too tight, just a bit, you know, rounded at the top. So now we can actually start creating change. We want by increasing the loudness or the, uh, the increasing loudness that is you can either boost or cut that frequency. For example, yeah, do not disturb me, please. you see how much it sounds, but if I take it low, yeah, do not disturb me, please. It sounds like it's lacking the low end. So we don't want anything crazy. We'll leave it at just minus two or minus 1.5. Alright, so now let's come to the high mid frequency. So come to the high mid. But I didn't do anything really in the low mid frequency because sometimes it's not really needed to do much. We're just going to do slight changes. We're not, we're not trying to do anything drastic, just slight changes. And that applies also by using a channel um, strip. So let's see, let's boost this a little to get that um, weight and brightness. Let's gain stage a little. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not 
and then let's darken the high end it's, it's, it, sound, it sounds a little bit too bright so let's take it to, to about 10 let's say 12 kilohertz and reduce some brightness on this thing do not disturb me please do not disturb my peace baby girl i want you please do not disturb my peace do not disturb me please and if my blood do not disturb me please do not disturb my peace baby girl i want you please do not disturb my peace do not disturb me please all right that sounds good you say it sounds bright at the same time it doesn't sound harsh i just use this high mid frequency sorry the high frequency to take out the harsh um sounds from it all right so now i've taken out the harsh sound and also made it a bit brighter and fuller without you know having a serious change in the vocal so this is the before do not disturb me And now this is the after. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm my brother. Alright, so now we're going on to compression. So now this compressor, we're going to try to control the dynamics of it. We don't want it to be all over the place. We want it to sound pleasant and polished. So typically for ratio one of compression, regardless of the compressor I'm using, I like to start with between 3.5 to 4.5. So let's just leave it at let's say four. There's somewhere in between, and this fast attack means it's going to start attacking as a compressor from one millisecond. So you have to always keep that in mind with the SSL, the G channel. The fast attack means it starts at one millisecond. So we have the release. This is also in milliseconds, by the way. So let's have it at. Let's have it at minus four. And then the threshold, of course, which is very important. Alright, I think that's you know, the threshold is simply where the compressor starts working at. So we we'll have to just be careful not to squash it, just find a reasonable threshold and not over compress it at the same time. And if you notice, we've lost a little bit of loudness, so we can always adjust that here for gain compensation. Just a little. All right. So now for the gate, you know what the gate does is that it works opposite from how a compressor works. The compressor, what it does is that it keeps everything under a certain threshold. Like any sound that tries to go above the threshold, it tries to bring it down to that threshold. And any sound that is, you know, follow and tries to bring it up to that threshold, like he works with that threshold as the um, kind of like a limbo. He tries to keep it within that bar but what how a gate works is that a gate or an expander anything below that threshold it kills it completely so if it's breathing sounds noise hums balls anything just with below that setting threshold it kills it completely so there are better plugins you can use to take out noise from vocals or any instrument recording like um isotope um rx noise remover which is very very effective but we're going to just see how the gate works and then we'll see what we can achieve with it. So let's listen. 
girl Do not disturb me, please Do not disturb my peace Baby girl, I want you, please Do not disturb my peace Do not disturb me, please And if I'm my blood, I I tell her, she calm down Alright, so now this is it we are without the um, gate So now you remember I said that what the gate does is that every, every, anything below a certain threshold, it kills it. So let's take it to, let's say, minus four. And then with this thing. Yeah, do not disturb. And then the range as well. Let's adjust the range to about 20 and see. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. You can see how kind of choppy the vocal sound. So we don't want it to sound too choppy, we want it to remain a bit natural. So I reduce the threshold. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do and you can also adjust the release. A slower release is better. Yeah, do for a more natural sounding gate. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. So let me turn off the gate and you see the difference. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb. You can hear that more of that noise. When I take it up here, you can hear less of the noise. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. So this is what the gate is simply meant for. But like I said, there are much better plugins for handling gates rather than this. I remember I also told you that if you want the compressor to come after the before the EQ, you do this. Or if you want after the EQ, you leave it as this. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I can leave it just after the EQ, leave it plain and simple. So you can see the SSL plugin is a very straightforward to use plugin. There are many buttons here, but they are all, it's all very, very easy to use. Nothing complicated is going on right here. All right, so let's see if we can remove the noise from the vocal. Of course, yeah, the analog as well. We can have the analog warmth. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I... It's already on, so we don't have to... If I toggle, it's going to turn it off, so... Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. You may not hear the difference because of the YouTube um, streaming quality, but trust me, leaving it on has a slight difference. kind of makes it a little, a little bit warmer. So, let's use RX7 to take out the noise, voice the noise. And then with this thing. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I and you can have you can have it before it so that because having that voice the noise might take out some of the analog properties that the compressor is creating. So we'll take it, we'll, we'll have it just before the um a waves SSL. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb. All right, now so let's turn on the beats and then we'll listen. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm my brother, I tell her, she calm down. Yeah, with a good So let me turn off the SSL and we'll compare. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my Turn it on. Yeah, do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm my brother, I tell her, she calm down. Yeah, with the Gucci and the Prada. I try to call her father. So, what I think it does is that it made it have more body, more warmth, sound, sound a bit fuller. That's what I think SSL did. Just a little bit, nothing crazy, but. Small changes in mixing can create a huge difference in the final output. So tell me, what do you think in the comment section? Do you think it made it sound better, it made it sound worse, or you can't tell the difference? It's okay if you can't tell the difference, it happens. But just let me know what you think in the comment section. All right. So if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also give us a thumbs up so other people that need this video can easily find us. And also by the subscribe button, you get to keep up to date with our daily uploads. And you also get to learn much faster and be the first to learn what we have to put out. I remember so classy. This is SC Toots. Cheers.